Let's take a look at the WSA. This is a dedicated appliance that we can use to enhance uh, the capabilities of our security defenses or security posture at the perimeter. The ASA is fantastic. The, the, the source fire, uh, firepower product as well. Uh, we have the ability to look at lots of applications and control a great deal of what's happening going through the firewall. But at the same time, it is a general purpose device looking at all applications. If we were to look at the percentage of attacks that are coming into our organization, most of us would find that those attacks are either coming through uh, web content or a lot of times through email. Uh, there's solutions for both, right? The WSA and the ESA. And these are used to complement the ASA as, as well as firepower solutions. When we take a look at what we're doing at the perimeter, how are we handling firewall, how are we handling VPN, um, how are we handling content? But if we want to get a deeper uh, look and much more granular control of that web content, uh, this is really uh, one of the products you might want to take a look at if you're not using it already. So the capabilities that it's going to offer, if we looked at four main security features, are going to be um, transparent redirection of user web traffic, which we'll take a look at how that works, uh, web filtering, as well as malware protection, as well as differentiated policies. And from there, we're just saying that we can do things like uh, SSL decryption or apply uh, specific content controls to different types of users at different times of the day. And we can do that by uh, leveraging very intelligent authentication policies. So the WSA uh, also offers additional capabilities for uh, web traffic protection. It's a single appliance for security and control. Uh, we can manage everything through that device directly. We don't need a, a separate management console necessarily. Uh, advanced threat defense, we're going to get up to the moment intelligence constantly uh, coming in from Talos. We've got granular acceptable use policies, which just again means that we can go down to users or even groups and we can apply policies. And of course, if you don't want to become that specific, uh, we can do things at a, a company-wide or default level as well and just take the things that would need to be a touch different and change those for specific groups and users. So it can be as broad or granular as you really need. Uh, and that granularity is nice when we start to do things like centralized reporting. Uh, again, it gives us uh, some visibility into what's actually happening with our web content, the types of applications that are being utilized. Um, not just, for example, uh, somebody being logged into Facebook, but specifically, what are they doing on Facebook? Is it chatting? Is it playing games? Uh, is it uploading you know, videos? What's that bandwidth actually being used for? So when we look at the WSA, it analyzes web content uh, through many different series of checks. What you'll see is that at the beginning of the connection, when traffic first comes in, we do some things like web reputation and content filtering uh, based on very easy checks. We can look at things like IP addresses. We can look at things like uh, potentially categories and do a drop right away. The, the content that makes it a little bit further is going to get a deeper, uh, more resource intensive analysis. And that's where we start to look for things like uh, potential malware. We could look for uh, potentially uh, data loss prevention applications that are being tunneled out of the organization or maybe intellectual property that's being moved out of the organization uh, have the chance to try to, to grab those things and prevent them before they leave. Uh, additionally, uh, once we think that everything is clean, we can look at files that, as they're going out. And if there's files that we see that were potentially unknown, uh, we can leverage Cisco's AMP to be able to do things like testing upon those files. So we can put them into a sandbox, determine whether or not they're actually going to be hostile. If we figure out something after the fact, we've got that nice breadcrumb trail of evidence that shows us what were the different pieces or files of our file system that that application uh, may have come in contact with that we were in. So here we see a design overview. And people say, well, what are all these components? What do I need them for? How do they fit together? Remember, you could be using a dedicated ASA, uh, just running ASA code, classic code, doing remote access VPN stuff. And then you could have a totally separate pair or cluster of firewalls running firepower. And then within the organization, using existing switches and routers, we could see particular traffic flows that are going by and say, you know what, for our web traffic, we want to have just the web traffic analyzed over here. And if you want to go a step further and do it with your email traffic, you could leverage an ESA, of course.
So looking at the WSA, remember that this is a web proxy. This is basically a man in the middle. You're building a full three-way handshake and then even up to uh, an SSL handshake with the WSA. Because it's in the middle, it has the ability to, of course, do caching of, of content, but what we're really excited about is the ability to analyze that content and see if there's anything that's hostile within it. Um, Again, we can look at the content for being hostile. We've got the ability to leverage antivirus engines. And we've got really great definitions that we can look at to say, okay, is this uh, particular web session going to be appropriate for what our line of business is? Is this things that people should be looking at or not looking at? Typically, the agreements for all that are ha uh, handled the day you get hired, uh, what the expectations are of internet usage within the business. But we've got a couple different ways that we can enforce it. We can give warnings, we could actually fully block, um, you can just do logging. We'll show you some of those opportunities and options as we go through the course here. Uh, the web server itself, when we take a look at that connection, um, remember that the user is responsible for initiating that web request. It's going to be passed to the WSA. Now, we'll take a look at how it gets there. It could be explicit or transparent. We'll look at what the difference between those uh, two concepts are as we go on. The WSA checks the request, and if it doesn't violate the policy, then he's going to go ahead and forward it to the web server. At that point, the web server replies with the content, which then gets passed to the WSA. WSA sanitizes the content, makes sure everything is okay, and then pushes it back down to the user. So some of the WSA features and reporting capabilities, we've got what's called Web Security Manager for building our policies. We've got Web Security Monitor. We've got, of course, logging capabilities directly within the WSA, and we can push that data out to an external SIM or syslog server uh, if that's what you're leveraging. Uh, we've got some pretty neat ways to tie the WSA into our existing authentication realms. So if we've got Active Directory, if we've got LDAP available, we can tie into that and we can leverage some information to figure out who are the users behind these web requests. When we take a look at acceptable use enforcement, we can use web proxies as well as URL filters, and we can do acceptable use policies by applications and protocols. When we take a look at uh, malware defense, we start off with some things like layer four traffic monitoring. Just think about that as using like just intelligence based on things like IP addresses, port numbers, things that we want to permit or deny. Uh, we can leverage uh, up to the moment intelligence coming from Cisco's Security Intelligence and Operations Group. Uh, we can leverage web reputation filters. We get information from Cisco, as well as third parties such as uh, WebRoot. We've got anti-malware capabilities from Sophos and McAfee. Uh, we've got a very intelligent scanning engine. We've got the ability to classify uh, the data that we're looking at, leveraging DVS, and steer the data into the right inspection engine. So, very, very sophisticated system. Also, with HTTPS decryption, this gives us the ability to open up traffic that would otherwise uh, just pass by unencrypted, or I'm sorry, un uninspected because it's encrypted, and by actually performing a man in the middle and jumping in the middle of that SSL session, we can decrypt and decode anything that we need to. So when we look at WSA use cases, uh, this is something that might be at a branch office, probably more likely to be in headquarters or maybe a co-location uh, if you're steering traffic into that facility and then bouncing it back out. I've seen people do that for just on-premise content scanning. Alternatively, uh, Cisco's got a cloud-based solution as well, uh, ScanSafe, that we can use for passing our web traffic through. So if we didn't host the WSA, uh, we could still get very similar capabilities uh, out of the cloud, and then we're not hosting the hardware, we're just licensing the service from Cisco. Uh, one of the neat things there is that Cisco is going to maintain data centers globally. So as our users travel around the globe, they can always get access to a, a close, uh, reliable proxy.